Uh, hello, welcome back. Hello again, YouTube. Welcome to our turbulence modeling heat transfer series, or turbulence modeling series, where now we want to focus on turbulent heat transfer. So today we want to talk about natural convection wall functions. So to pick up where we left off, we, we see that, okay, in general it's a little bit hard to do turbulence modeling near the wall and measure parental number near the wall uh, because you have so many kinds of flows. And we also know that uh, for externally driven flows versus buoyancy driven flows, the wall functions are pretty much different. And if you were to force the ex the our normal wall externally driven flow wall functions in, on the buoyancy driven flow, you will actually um, if you use a k epsilon model, you over predict the natural convection heat transfer by about thirty percent, which is a lot. Yeah. So the solution then is okay. We got to get our hands dirty and you know do a new series of wall functions so uh, this is from Yen uh, 1993 uh, so he developed a, they developed a wall I don't know yeah Yen and company they developed a series of wall functions okay so here's a comparison uh, I mean from one of their tables right uh, for these new wall functions because they are new dimension new ways to non-dimensionalize the the uh, parameters for example the distance from the wall y then you have a velocity u and the temperature t there are new ways to non-dimensionalize all of these because your driving force behind uh, behind this uh, flows are different okay so for natural convection you have y plus which you put in this friction velocity likewise you have u plus uh, so uh, we have that temperature dimensionless uh, temperature we will have this uh, friction friction uh, temperature which is this u tau and that includes this uh, friction velocity and the heat flux at the wall over rho cp of the fluid uh, these are taken at film temperatures right film temperatures uh, they're usually uh, 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 same i mean they are they are uh, between the wall the temperatures between the wall and the, the fluid Okay, we usually uh, so is that is you you take the average of both of them, and that will be your film temperature. I mean, that's a te film temperature estimate, a characteristic film temperature. Uh, of course, uh, yeah, like like I said, uh, if if you had uh, I mean all the properties, uh, all the temperature measurements available, that'd be great. But uh, I already t uh, kind of emphasized before, it was very difficult to it's very difficult to measure you know turbulence properties and all of these things very near the wall okay in general you know, get a proper temperature profile etc etc okay uh, especially we want to measure those uh, turbulence bits you want to measure temperature profile uh, yeah sure but the turbulence ones are a little bit more difficult to measure anyway uh, so back to back on topic uh, you know u tau equals uh, square root of tau wall over p or rho sorry the density Okay, so for natural convection, we, we have a, a little bit of difference, right? So we have a Y star, which is uh, in, uh, instead of uh, 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 non-dimensionalizing by U tau, we use UQ, UQ and alpha. Alpha is the thermal diffusivity. So yeah, you see uh, alpha is the thermal diffusi diffusivity, and this is used in place of uh, the momentum diffusivity or kinematic viscosity new okay and likewise the the velocity profile is actually normalized both by the uh, uq which is the you know the the, the characteristic uh, buoyancy velocity or something like that and then the friction velocity as well likewise for t we have uh, New new way of non-dimensionalizing using a different kind of non-dimensional temperature or different kind of reference temperature and it's based on the buoyancy properties and the heat flux of the wall. So what, what are these actu quant new quantities actually? So UQ is defined as such. You have G beta alpha, G beta alpha times Q wall over rho CP. You take it to the power of 1 over 4. I know it looks, looks messy, looks a, a little scary, but just take it as it, as it is uh, yeah it's just a reference velocity for us how was this actually derived they use dimensional analysis and they're playing around with some Grasshoff numbers uh, and the Rayleigh number 
all of these dimensional analysis actually plays into this uh, reference velocities and that's why you see g beta alpha over there these are important for uh, natural convection likewise tq is also similar you have q wall because this is important in natural convection over the uh, heat capacity term uh, there's a cube there again dimensional analysis gb alpha again this natural convection specific terms okay and uh, yeah if you remember your Grasshoff number or Rayleigh number, you will see these terms actually pop up inside um, these dimensionless, dimensionless numbers, important for natural convection. So this is what the wall functions are. These are what the wall functions are like. I mean, there are many versions of uh, the wall functions, but I just I just want to go and pick one that uh, you know you can see the graphs and everything. Yeah. So this this is a good and uh, they're actually from this paper. Wall functions for numerical simulation of turbulent convection along vertical plates. So this this is the standard wall function uh, by these guys. Yeah. So uh, the temperature wall function is like that. Uh, you know, I will use uh, you know, T T star natural because uh, it can get a little confusing, especially if we want to compare with T plus because uh, T plus also has. Uh, I mean, if you if you shift this U tau to the bottom and you you call this your your friction temperature, sometimes the notation is also T star, which can make things a bit confusing. So to to uh, make it less confusing, I use T star natural, NATL natural convection, in order to differentiate that. Hey, I'm talking about this one, all right? So for T star, uh, for Y star less than one, so this Y star here. Y star, remember we have alpha and UQ, it's non dimensionalized in this form. Okay, uh, you have T star equals Y star, okay, very near the wall. It's very similar to the, the uh, what we have for like a viscous or conduction sublayer for the momentum and uh, temperature uh, profiles, uh, respectively, or velocity and temperature profiles, respectively. And then from y star equals 1, from going from 1 to 100, you have this logarithmic dependence. And already here, you can, I mean, just by inspection here, you will see that there's a long, there's a logarithm of y star dependence, or a square term already. It's non-linear with respect to ln y. And that's why you cannot exactly match uh, the temperature profiles for, let's say, natural convection and, uh, yeah, turbulent convection, uh, forced, forced convection for turbulence. So it's a bit difficult in that sense. But these are these are what the empirical results are. So this is the temperature profile. Okay, at y more than y star more than 100, t star natural is about 4.4. So this is is uh, this is just like you know um, very far from the wall. Uh, your fluid temperature is roughly constant because uh, um, okay because the I mean, uh, where does the heat go, right? Where does the heat go? The heat actually goes along with the fluid and it flows up, okay? It flows it flows uh, upwards. It flows upwards and, I mean, uh, if you have a natural convection on a flat plate, I mean, you will have a steadily growing boundary layer, okay? But uh, let's say you, you, you go far enough from the wall and then you, you find that uh, the fluid here is at the ambient temperature, T infinity. Right, you go far enough from the wall, you'll have uh, ambient temperature fluid, because uh, I mean that's just 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 your boundary layer thickness, and yeah, most of the 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 heat actually is transported upwards rather than going outwards indefinitely, because it's convection, right? So that's that's why it stays constant once you like travel far away enough from the wall. Okay, so that's that's temperature wall function for you. Okay, so this is what it is. Just take it as it is. It's just curve fitting of experimental data. Nothing more than that. And you put in some dimensional, anal dimensional analysis just to make sure your dimensionless parameters are correct. That's all. Okay, so velocity wall function is like this. Uh, U star star. There's a lot of stars here. Okay, uh, almost, yeah, lots of stars. Yeah, anyway, so I'm seeing a lot of stars, so hopefully I'm not knocked out. Yeah, yeah. Hope it doesn't knock you out as well. 
I know it can be a bit long, all of this stuff. Anyway, um, U star star is the minimum of two custom functions. They call it F1 and F0, okay? Uh, F1 and F0. So let's take a look at what this F1 and F0 are and what their physical significance is. So again, uh, F1 is actually like this. It is this function over here. It is this function over here. And uh, it's, it's a cubic function of y1 star star. So y1 star star is the length coordinate specially made for F1. So you don't use y1 star star anywhere else except in F1. So that's why it's got that star star and it's labeled one. Okay. So the the function is as such you have a cubic cubic increasing function. Then you have your uq and your u tau again. It's uh, defined slightly differently from this. So that's why. Again it's an empirical function, so just like live with it. Uh, it's not don't think too hard about it. Okay. And uh, this is for y1 star star less than 0.53. For y1 star star more than 0.53, f1 equals to 0.228. Alright, 0.228. Alright, so uh, this is the first function f1. Okay, so y star bigger than 0.53, uh, y1 star star is zero, bigger than 0.53. I mean, it just takes a constant value. Okay. And uh, what, what does this deal with? This is the velocity in the inner sublayer. Where's the inner sublayer? So if you want to uh, cut this, this turbulence profile in half, okay, this is the inner sublayer, all right? This is the inner sublayer. Inner sublayer. So that is what that is what the F1 is trying to describe. So it, it goes up it goes up to some point and uh, at y1 equals to 0 0.53 I assume when it reaches 0 0.53 it will reach, reach this value of 0 0.288 so this f1 will, will go okay it will go from uh, the, it, it looks like this uh, you know cubic function at the beginning and then after that it flattens out right that's uh, f1 for you Okay. Um, and then what's F2? F2, it's this function. Okay, it is this function. Um, yeah, uh, again, or oh, F0, sorry, F0. F0 is this function. Okay. Uh, where actually, when it's, uh, it's uh, less than 0 0.005, it takes this value of 0 0.288. Now notice that y y y zero star y zero uh, star star is actually a little bit different from here. Again, it's a custom, it's custom use for f zero. There's nowhere else you will use this y star zero zero. So again, um, below below uh, y zero point zero zero five, you will have f zero equals to zero point two two eight. And then you, you have this logarithmic looking function from y0 star star equals to 0 0.005 to 0 0.1. Then after that, uh, and when y0 star, y star star is more than 0 0.1, f0 equals to 0. Uh, okay, so what is f0 actually like? Uh, if, you, if you take a look, uh, and you, if you take a look at the, um, you take a look at the, uh, what it stands for, okay? F0 actually deals with the velocity in the outer sub layer, according to the paper uh, by Yang, I think, yeah, Yuan, sorry, Yuan. He, uh, we, F0 deals with the velocity in the outer sub layer. So we can kind of guess what this is already. So um, this this 0 0.228, okay, if you, if you take a look at this, uh, I will use uh, pink or yellow, I'll use yellow, so below a certain y from the wall, it will be at 0 0.288, or 0 0.228, sorry, so this is a u mean star star, okay, let's, let's uh, non-dimensionalize in that manner, okay, 
Bef below this, below below a certain threshold, it's at 0 0.028228. And then you have a decreasing log region. You can see all of the terms are sort of you know negative. And you get more negative as you increase. Okay, it gets more negative as you increase. So initially you will have a y0 star star value of less than 1. Which means uh, if you log, if you take the logarithm of anything less than one, that will be a negative value. So you have negative times a negative, you get a positive. You have a okay. This one will always be positive, so uh, doesn't really matter. But uh, okay, yeah. So um, yeah. So you you start at some positive value for this. This will make the entire term here positive. Then as you increase your your y zero star star, it will start getting more and more negative until it reaches some uh, zero point. Then at y, y0 star star more than 0 0.1, uh, f0 just takes uh, a value of zero. So that means like uh, very far from the wall, you will have, uh, very far from the wall, you have your velocity, your dimensional velocity, uh, actually reaching a value of zero. So this is f0 here. Then of course the logarithmic part will actually follow this part of the curve. So if you were to take the minimum, you'll take the minimum of uh, f0 and f1, f0, f1, you actually get your velocity profile, which is over here. Okay, so uh, it'll be this profile here, the minimum of f0 and f1. So this is uh, all this, this, uh, this, uh, this, this thing is trying to say. Okay, so this is all that the velocity profile here is trying to say. Okay, this, this complicated looking function is just to produce this shape for us. And it is validated by natural convection data from air. So this is uh, this, this uh, log profile is for air. It doesn't seem to be tested for any other fluid. But uh, of course, if you have data, you can like compare against this correlation and see whether it works. Okay, so... Um, yeah, you can see this this uh, correlation is not very useful outside pure natural convection. Uh, but I mean, if you want to compare this to the log layer profile, we can. Uh, it will still take a lot of effort and we have to assume that we know our heat flux value. Why? Because you see Q wall is over here. We need to, and you see, uh, unless, unless you have a very special case where your heat flux at the wall is constant and most of the time, what you have it's a uh, isothermal plate. If an isothermal plate, if you have isothermal plate, uh, fixed temperature here, uh, oftentimes the heat flux at uh, at the different different places will be a bit different. So, for example, over here, uh, the heat flux is the most because the the temperature difference is the most, right? The Q equals uh, minus k. The more heat flux is the most. Because the, the temperature difference, uh, temperature gradient at the uh, between the, the the wall and the the environment is is the most at the at the bottom. But as you as you keep going up, as you keep going up this uh, flat plate, you you probably find that the heat flux here is less than uh, at the bottom. So uh, because of course here now now you have this 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 part which is acting as a Thermal resistance. See thermal resistance. So the, here you have a temperature at T infinity. Here's a T wall, and over here you have a temperature between T infinity and T wall. Okay, uh, this is if the wall is colder. You just switch. You just switch the more than signs or less than signs around if you have a hot wall. Okay, I think, okay, uh, I was trying to draw a hot wall anyhow, so this should be the way. Okay, anyway, so that's, that's, that's what we have. Um, so we have to assume some constant heat flux, or else we have to, like, you know, use a code to compute the heat flux at every single point on the wall, which isn't, I mean, isn't too bad, because, I mean, for, it's not like the friction velocity is constant throughout your boundary layer flow anyhow. So I probably, probably want to use something similar. Um, okay, uh, so that's one way you can compare, uh, but yeah, that's one way to compare. Alternatively, you can, you can do some manipulation to get T plus out of the T star equations. So 
because you see uh, the T star, okay, the T star natural, uh, the T star natural is is uh, for natural convection is as such. You have TQ inside, and TQ actually contains this Q Q wall cube over rho CP. And if you if you take a look, the the terms here actually look like this term over here, which is very com in common with the terms you will find in your friction uh, temperature anyhow. So, I mean, we can try that, and I'm going to show you a little bit. Okay, so uh, you have UQ is is such Q wall over rho CP, and if you were to take the Q wall over rho CP term out, you would just get this term, T wall minus T U tau over U, uh, T T plus. So I just I just brought this to this side and uh, divide throughout by T. So I just uh, swap these two, uh, this term and this term, and there we go. And you'll notice that T wall over uh, the temperature difference over T plus that is just the uh, the uh, dimensionless. I mean not not dimensionless temperature. This is the, the friction temperature. Friction temperature is T star also. We use a subscript here. So that's Q wall over rho C P U star. Okay, so uh, that that's what we have. So if you if you notice the, yeah, if you notice you can just actually if you look at this definition you can just bring u star to the left hand side, and you will get exactly the same expression for q wall over rho cp. That's the other way to look at it. But I'll stop now. Uh, thanks for watching uh, this video. Do leave a like and subscribe and subscribe if you found this useful. Uh, carry on the discussion in the next video. Thanks for watching.